Hey, I just want to show you guys what I do with my scraps. Hub just went out the door to low, so you know I got some time. Dogs are sleeping in shifts. Not great, but it'll do. So I think in the past I've shown you guys that um, I did uh, sewing of the plastic cereal bags like Natasha from Treasure Books did. She has a video on how she made hers. I made the same thing, and what I do is I put my my painty paper scraps in them, and when I do that, I make the fasteners the same color as what I'm putting in the envelope, like the red one has the red disc, the yellow has the yellow disc, so on and so forth. Where are they? Oh, right here. And I keep them all kind of in this basket, so there's black and white, blue, brown, yellow, and another blue, purple, pink, orange, rojo. Okay, so um, I have those there. And then the reason I'm doing this is I'm covering uh, some kind of, I don't know, packaging. Oh, it was something with Japanese in it. Oh, it was Japanese paper. And um, this was the you know, the back of the paper, on the paper pad. So I cut this to the size I needed, and I've just been taking my scraps and just gluing them on top here. That's all I've been doing. Nothing, you know, earth-shattering special. But I wanted to cover them up because, oops, not quite big enough. Hang okay, on. This is what started this whole thing. I got a box from my friend Cindy, and she sent me this cute idea. I've never seen this done before, and I jumped on it like white on rice. So, uh, these are uh, notepads, you know? And she used this kind of system. It's called Rollabind. And this is the other part that goes with it, and it pokes holes. Oh, do I have one? No! Okay. It pokes holes so that you can pull paper out of what you're doing, and then you can put it back in when you're done. Ain't that cool? And then it has the plastic um, discs, which I ordered a bunch, and then put it away for a year and a half and never touched it. Then all of a sudden I see an idea and wham, I have to do it. So get ready for the noise. Here are all the little discs. You can order them off of Amazon. You can buy them in bulk. And they come in different sizes and shapes. And the ones that she sent me, the ones that Cindy sent me, have hearts in them on the ends. There's a heart. Let me put it this way. See, there's a little heart. Can you see it? There's the hearts. They're cute. I got the plain ones because I didn't realize how cute the other stuff was. So anyway, she poked holes in these, and then she put those notepads on there and went, oh, that's a great thing for by the phone, by the refrigerator, for grocery lists. The only problem is, is that um, if you stick it on the freezer or you stick it on the fridge door, it may, I think it'll lay kind of flat, but not quite flat. So if you do it on the end of your fridge like this, your fridge is here, and you just do it, overlap it a little bit over the, edge of the fridge door or freezer door it should lay flat after that that way the discs aren't in the way all right so there's that so i saw this and then i was like uh oh gotta go so i went to dollar tree and i bought a whole bunch of pads for a buck buck and a uh, buck and a quarter a piece this one's already been cut so i started with this one and i made this this is part of the paper out of that pad these are chipboard pieces I've been hoarding and then I took the Operation um, Ephemera thingy was it Operation Reprint and I ripped this whole thing out and I cut all the pages up which are now in well, where is it okay I set them over here so I could find them and don't you know as soon as I move something I've lost them oh here it is I put them in these um, plastic envelopes. So here are all the little tiny ones that are like postage stamp size. And here are the advertisements that I showed in another video. They had the black and then the um, brownish looking things like this. So I put these in here. And then as soon as I get some new envelopes, I'm, this is too large to go 
in here, but as soon as I get a smaller, more squarish looking envelope, I'll put all this back in there. And then I can insert that in here and, and I can still say on the label here that it was Operation Reprint Vintage Stamps and Ephemera on this. That way I know it's all in one place and it's done. I doubt seriously I will cut up the cover like I did the one for um, the coffee. I'm not crazy about doing all this teeny fussy cutting. I just don't, I'm not interested in doing it. Um, but so there's the, the cover. Okay, so there's that rat hole. I mean rabbit hole. <laughs> so I took, I saw somebody else who made a cover with stamps. Let me think, who was it I saw? Corey Dahman, I think, is who I saw do it. So I saw that, and I was like, well, okay, I can do this. After I cut out those bajillion fake stamps out of that uh, Operation Reprint book, I glued them all on the front of the board, the chipboard, and then I went over. Now, I, because I'm not very good at gluing the ends down, I went ahead and used a uh, matte medium, a matte, matte medium, and glued it down. And the thing is, is I didn't realize I was going to cover it, so I didn't cover over that. So I learned my lesson on this one. I bought another little notepad where, let's see, it was this tall. And I, it's, it's a, it's stick, this, these are sticky and I didn't want sticky. So I took my cutter and I cut it all off here and save this so I can use it for like little notes because it's sticky. Don't waste it. Then I took the, the roll of bind, um, cutter and I'll show you how that works in a second. And I went ahead and put the whole pink one on here and then I had pink disc. Okay. So there's this one. This will be covered in some kind of pink paper. Then I bought the green version of the pink one, but I made smaller little pads. So I have two gold and two blacks, and these, these are much smaller discs than the pink ones. If you can see, they're much smaller. So I could not get more than what I got on there. This is a, this is, the gold is a little bit bigger than the black, and the pink is a little bit bigger than the gold and the black. Does that make sense? Anyway, so they're, they're in, you know, large, medium, small sort of thing. So I took this pad that was the same size as this one that was green and divided it up into four smaller sections. And what I'm doing now is going to cover up one of the green ones with this. So because I have the raw board on the ends here, I didn't do that this time. This time... I went ahead and covered it all the way to the end. Now, I haven't covered the inside because, frankly, I don't really care because these are just notepads for my desk. So if I can unearth scissors. Oh, look, here we go. All right, so I'm going to take my scissors and just, might still be just a little bit damp. I don't know if that thing's going to work when they're a little bit damp. All right, so here is my little board, and it's going to go over this. Okay, so it's going to stick out like that. All right, so let me turn this off and clean a spot, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so over a year ago, maybe more like a year and a half or two years ago, my friend Peg gifted me this punch doodad. It's called Rollabind, and it came in this package with this, which I was, you know, I didn't really pay close attention to. It was in here like this, and then I think this was in here like this, whoops, like that, like so, and I read the directions yesterday <laughs> for the first time. So you take these out, there's the directions on how to use it, super duper, simple, 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 simple. All right, so this is the first part, is you need to learn that this thing right here folds underneath, but you need it to go out in the very beginning. All right, so when you, when you want to do this, you line up your stuff. There's measurements on here. There's uh, 
nine, eight and a half, six inch, six inch, eight. So you can like do your paper in between. Oh, phooey, I didn't have time for that. So I just butted it up to the, whoops, you can't see that. I just butted it up to the end here. And then this thing clamps down on it and keeps this from moving. Then once you have your spacing the way you want it, you fold this underneath and it bumps this up off the table. Then you move this and it is the hole punch. And here's a little bitty, there's this little bitty round thing, you see it right there, which goes inside those little bitty holes. Well, it butts up against it, so here it is. Oh, this is tight because it's thick and I glued that stuff on there. Let's see if I can get it in there, I don't know. Oh, it might not work. <gasps> Three. Okay, uh, let me move this again to make sure it's in there and it does not move. Then you peel this around. And then you're supposed to slide this in here and insert, you see this thing? You just insert it in that little knot that's in the ruler. Now, see, if I try to push it in there like that, it's going to move it. So maybe gluing the paper on this chipboard is not going to let it work. Okay, so I want you to see how it works. So I'll use a piece of paper and I'll struggle with my cover later. And this thing's really tall. My camera's not. All right, so I'll do it diagonally. All right, so you slide your, you move this out. You slide the paper in here. You push this down and make sure your paper's butted up to the edges here. Then you take this, you flip it under, you put this here, and you put that little, that little nub right there into that little knot, and you just press down. Basically, it's a weird shaped paper punch. And then you put it in the next knot. Voila. Is that incredible or what? I loved it. So I've kind of gone nuts doing it. <laughs> then you just lift this up and your paper comes out. The only, now there is a drawback. Number one, you've seen it with my chipboard that I cannot get it all the way in there. Number two is when you have a huge stack of papers like, like this, you can only, I had, when I cut the top off, it left it as like loose paper. You can only do two to four sheets at one time. So it takes a while to cut through this whole thing. You can't just put it in there once and do it because it doesn't allow it. So you can slot, you can take like two or three of these and then punch the hole in them. And then the next two or three and punch a hole in the next two or three, so on and so forth. It takes a while to do it. But I'm watching some, I don't know, spy movie or something on Netflix. So it's no big deal. All right, so now I want to figure out how to get this in, in here because I really want to do this. All right, so let's push this down, see what we can do. Oh, no. All right, this thing here. Oh, yeah, something other feature is the bottom of it is the paper catcher. So you just open it up and dump it out. But there's no way that you can get this in there with the paper thing, it, this this does not impede anything. So you have to close it back up to catch all the goo. But it this there's a little slit inside there that is very very thin that won't hold a lot. So I have a feeling that yep it already moved it. That is my problem with this thing. I'm gonna have to find a thinner piece of chipboard, I guess. Let me see if I can start here first. Nope, because every time I try to shove it in there, it wiggles around. I don't think that if I cut this, it will be perfectly lined up nope, with my discs. Let's try this. See, it just cut on the end and I just wasted all that stuff. Okay, plan B. Okay, plan B. I did not realize that this was not going to take the chipboard from a cereal box plus glued paper in here because the slot is not large enough. So I think maybe if I'm going to do this, it's going to have to be cardstock. Um, so how I got my measurement, 
This is very technical. Just watch this. It's very, very technical. Did you see that? I had to do a lot of measuring for that. I mean, it was stressful. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's whip this out and cut. Let's see, is that the top? Yeah, close enough. And then cut this. All right, let me see if it'll fit over here. Oh yeah, good enough for a notepad. And then the other technical thing is, <laughs> this just cracks me up, it's so hard. He labored over it for a nanosecond. All right, put this through here, line this bad boy up. And instead of gluing something on it, I will doodle on it. Because, it, you know, they're scrap pads, what, I, I don't really care. All right, let's try this again. So we're gonna put this in here, butt it up against the end because that's where I did all the original paper. Now, if you wanna do it in the middle for something, for six inch paper, they give you the guidelines here, but I just butted it up to the end and it worked out perfectly. All right, and then snap that down, push this back, see this goes back, folds in, whoop, folds out, folds in. This goes here, one, Two, three, four. All right, let's see if I can get this in here without too much whining and crying. All right, let's see. So you just kind of press it up against here. Look at that. Is that cool? I love it, but I gotta erase all this off. So I, I cut it a little too large. So I'm gonna go back and make an adjustment. The reason I'm doing these is because I never find any kind of paper on my desk to write stuff on. Yes, I have thousands of pieces of paper, nothing to write on. So I thought this would be a really good idea so that I could um, use these for paper pads. And, you know, I spent $4 on the paper. whoop de doo right? Yeah, Lucy said she thought it was a whoop de doo <laughs> All right, I'm just going to push this in here, mash that down. Yeah? You think? Huh? Yeah. Are you mad? <laughs> All right. One, two. And it does three holes at a time. You can see them on the bottom, those little black. Well, that one's got paper in it still. Let's see. Can I get rid of that? No, of course not. All right. Let me dump this out. Oh, yeah. And you can close it by moving that switch. Just like you do the um, flat punches, same concept. There you go. Let's see if I can get this out of here so you can see it. Come on, there you go. It says in the directions it needs to be oiled every now and then, but there they are, the little blades inside the form. And you just close this, because that's your paper catcher. And then be careful when you let this out, because this thing goes wham. <laughs> it's kind of shocking when you do it the first time. All right, so we have this. I'm going to take this. Where is it? Oh, goodness. All right, you can take this off. No fuss, no muss. Look at that. Da -da 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 -da. Push this up against these guys, line up the holes, and cut away. Oh, my goodness, she's complaining down on the floor. She wants to up, so I have to go lift her up. Her back legs are not working very well these days. I guess I need to use a straight edge because this looks terrible. Oh, my gosh. That's awful. All right, so I know, I hear you, sweetie. Just let me finish this, and then I will come lift you up off the, off the bed. Yeah, I know. Okay, so take this.
But wait, there's more. I can't hardly stand it that I could not get this to work in the paper cutter and ruin the side here because it was too thick to get through. So I shall not be defeated by chipboard. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take cardstock and then I'm going to glue paper on top of cardstock and see if I can get it in that um, thingy here because it's very thin. All right, so let me figure out what I'm doing here. This is not going to fit on this, so I'm just going to use this scrap piece. I'm not going to ruin something else. I'm just going to take the paper and see if I can glue it on here. Where is the paper? Here it is. I'm going to take this and see if I can glue some of this on here. I really don't care. It's scrap paper. And I'm just going to use this. I just can't hardly stand it. I got defeated by a piece of chipboard. Just outrageous. <laughs> I'm hoping that because the um, cardstock is thin and the paper is thin, that oops, it will go into the um, cutter. And that way I know that I can still have different colors using my scrap paper on the cover. Oh, and it does make it a little thicker, more sturdy. So I'm going to try it this way. I know I'm not going to give up on this. I've got to make this work. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's try it this way. Now, it's not even and it's not pretty, but I ju it's just an experiment that I decided after I turned off the camera and processed the, the stuff onto the disc and I took a nap and talked with my friends. I thought, you know what? I am going back to the drawing board. I can't let this stupid thing defeat me because I still have these to finish. And I haven't done anything to this one yet. So, oh yeah, and then... I have this, which is the other half of this one. And the reason this one, it was okay, is because I didn't double up the paper on the edge. It did, the cutter did go through the board, but this is packaging material. This one was a little harder. This is the cream of wheat box. Boy, this is an old one. I quit eating that stuff like two years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. All right, so let me... Oh, after I turned the camera off, you saw me doing the doodling on this. I went ahead and did this. I didn't put anything on the back. I didn't want to waste time doing that. So then I took more of that the cardstock and I cut another piece that would fit this and glued the two pieces together. So I bet you anything, this will go through here if you want a sturdier cover for this. This is not going to stand up being banged around in a purse. So this is not, I would not consider this a good thing for a purse, but if you're going to leave it on your desk or by the phone or your side of the bed to write down stuff, this is a good way to do it. And it's cheap because it was a dollar for the um, pad of paper. I already had the cardstock. Uh, the only thing I paid for, I think, were these, and I bought them in bulk. So I, I imagine that the price, and I've had them a couple years, so I imagine the price was just minimal. I bought a whole bunch of them that are this size in different colors because it was just in bulk. So the price to make this was probably less than $2. All right, so there's that. And I did do, I doubled up on the back also. Okay, so let's try this. This thing just opens, wow, that thing just wang. All right, let's try this. Uh. Oh, yeah. <gasps> works perfectly. Hello, honey. All right, so let me add yet another piece of paper on top of this to see if how thick I can get it without it working. It won't work. So I'm just going to glue with this. I imagine this is not great for the cutter, all this glue and stuff that's on here. But it also says in the directions on the back, it shows the picture of somebody using an oil can that you need to oil the you need to oil the cutter every now and then so it works properly. All right, so let me cut this. Let me get the excess off. Let's see how we do. Okay, so that's two pieces of cardstock, and then 
one piece of miscellaneous. I think this is a uh, computer paper where I jelly printed on it. Let's see if this will work. Oh yeah, goes in there. No problem. Yep. So the best kind of stuff to use for this, I guess, is a very, very thin, thin packaging like the stuff that Tim Holtz puts in his um, all his packaging. All that kind of very thin backing packaging on stuff. This was a little harder to punch through. I remember it gave me a little bit of a challenge, but this is more like a thin ch chipboard. This stuff is much thicker. All right, now that it's dried, let me see if I can get it in here. No, it's not having it. <laughs> it, is not, it does not want to go in there and... Oh! Look. Okay, that is not a good idea. So I think that this kind of chipboard is not good to put in this. I think it will jam it and mess you up. So you need to glue maybe two layers. This has three layers of basic two cardstocks and one layer of just basic computer paper. So it will work with that, but this kind of chipboard, not so much. This is off the back of that uh, Japanese writing paper from Daiso. This is good chipboard, so it won't go through here. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, guys, that's it. I just wanted to to show you what I I got extra thoughts and decided I would keep trying with this because I didn't think that one piece of cardstock was enough to give it support. But I wanted it to be like a little book, but I didn't want it to be flimsy. So it's a little sturdier, but would be better with chipboard. Don't get me wrong. I like... I. I like how sturdy this one is. I didn't put as much paper in this one, but I like how sturdy this one is. But I used a different kind of board for that. So just beware when you go to use this thing that you are limited to the thickness of the kind of chipboard or board that you use when you want to make a nice sturdy cover. Okay, so now I really am done. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck. Bye.